This thing's straight up for the bow enthusiast. As far as bows, I personally felt for a while that they've lacked innovation. This one does have special things, and it's a perfect example of if the juice is worth the squeeze. PvE and PvP have some really solid perk combinations, and as far as if the juice is being worth a squeeze, it looks like it needs to be a true 5 out of 5. Some 4 out of 5s making the cut. It's very role dependent. Regardless, you need to pretty much land fully. So what I want to do with this review is show you the options, what this thing's capable of. I posted on Twitter just a picture of the bow. What are your first impressions? Like what comes to mind when you see this bow? The top answer, it's a bow. Never change. To a lot though, that's pretty true. It's just another bow. A lot said, well, Strident Whistle exists. And here's where it gets interesting. On the surface, yes, they offer similar things. But all of this, as always with Destiny gear, it's gonna depend on what you have already, if you're happy with it, and what you're trying to accomplish. Prius Dian X4 is a solar precision bow just like Strident and Whistle. There's a wild road you can go down. Slippery slope. Let's say you do have Strident and Whistle with Incandescent. It's a great thing to have on a bow. It does what it's supposed to do. You get a kill, explosion, you spread Scorch. With a Steinax though, it has Wildcard, the new origin trait. You get it down, it drops a Telesto Bolt. And as we've talked about before, the Telesto Bolt on the weapon takes on the qualities of both perks in Column 3 and Column 4. You're going to get it down. On adds, it's 1, and the Crucible, it's 3. As the enemy difficulty is higher, the more it can drop. So it's going to hit the ground, it's going to stay there, there's a proxy debt. If something walks by, it explodes. So in the case of Incandescent, it has two things added now. Number one, it can flat out just finish off a target that's burning. They got hit with the initial explosion, they're walking around, the bolt's on the ground, the bolt damage can down them, and then it's going to proc Incandescent again. Just out of left field because it takes on the properties of the weapon, and in this case, Incandescent. And two, if there's just plainly a low health enemy, not been scorched, nothing like that, they're walking around, they happen to come upon that wild card Telesto bolt, if that bolt downs them, it's going to proc incandescent on them. It's like you hit them with a bullet. So yes, on the surface, stride and whistle, this new one, they do the same thing. Achieving that goal. But technically, this one outdoes the incandescent part because of that little extra thing it can do. Not to mention we have adept mods, more on that later. While we're on this slippery slope, on this road, after all that, we compare those two, you can just bring up Tyranny of Heaven. And I think that just clears both of these as far as incandescent easily. If your goal is to nail trash mobs and spread Scorch, it doesn't get any better than Dragonfly and Incandescent. It doesn't. And this thing's craftable. So those are the types of weird conversations that we have. And we're just talking about Incandescent and we're going to move on to other perks. But in the end, if you're happy with a bow that has Incandescent and is doing fine, eh, it might not be worth it to go for a wild card. That's just a chance to happen anyway. But when it comes to this one, a perk like Incandescent is great on it. And as I started with, again, it's just if it's worth it to you. It's all up to you. This thing has more to offer. One of the big things about this bow is it being adept. And being adept means you can have an adept draw time mod on it. Now, Bungie, let's go ahead and close that gate of gatekeeping of some of these mods being from the trials chest. Like, I wouldn't mind if draw time came from GM chests and things like that. Maybe we should open that up. But this being a precision bow, it can get down to the fastest draw time possible because of that mod. And then after that, we have some scalers that take over. Archer's Tempo, Successful Warm-Up, things like that. Hush 2.0. And I put over a thousand PvP kills on Hush. When bows like that get cooking, they're a pain to deal with. And in the Crucible as a whole, widely bows have just been hated on. I mean, just getting this gameplay, my opponents, they were tired of it. They hated it. But this thing with the perks and draw time, the peak shotting in and out of cover fast, it's powerful and a nuisance. And the one you've been seeing isn't full force at all. It can go faster than this. But to do that, you need to land the five out of five. Look at mine. This is my adept one. Flexible string, fiberglass, adept draw. So we get to 601 draw speed with Archer's Tempo successful warm-up. Meanwhile, on a non-adept one, elastic string draw time masterwork. I would then add on an adept draw time. So that combination, and I have warm-up on it, is the trio you should be going for. PVE and the Crucible. Elastic string, draw masterwork, adept draw time. And technically, it's going to be the compact arrow that helps reload and handling. So it's the fastest base draw possible on a precision bow. And because it's faster, simply, it's more damage output. It's more DPS. After that, depending on what you have on it and what you want on it, we have scalers to go even faster. So in the Crucible, that's it. It's just that. Elastic string, draw time masterwork, adept draw mod. Archer's tempo or enlightened action with successful warm-up. And each of these perks have their good things about them, like successful warm-up. The deal with that is once it's up, it's proc'd, you have that draw scaler, 
Being a precision bow, it's 101 to the body. Your TTK is two shots anyway. So as long as you have successful warm up going on, yeah, you want to go to the head, but you can just warm up double body shot. You have archer's tempo and go head body. So the goal would be to get like the fastest bow possible on the precision frame. 151 to the head's no joke. In PVE, gets a little bit interesting because it depends on what you want to do. And I, I'm still on the side of the fence that when it comes to the bowstring and arrow and the masterwork, it's draw time. More arrows get out. We have some new perks on this thing like Precision Instrument. And in an adept version like mine, it might be worth it. I took it through the GM, it did fine. It's on screen working. Dealing sustained damage increases precision damage. It stacks it six times and at max stack, it's 25% more damage. With it being adept, you can forego the draw time and add on big ones, adding on to that 25%. And remember, with the Precision Instrument, it's just hits. So as long as you're getting hits, it could be to the body, maybe you're taking out trash mobs. The multiplier is gonna stay up, it's four crits. You have a little bit of time between shots, something like Oathkeeper damage. It's not gonna work too well. Well, it will barely work like at a one bar charge. So with this one, I didn't get any draw time help. The only draw time help I'm getting is from Archer's Tempo. Draw time decreases after every precision hit. Even though this is great, it's gonna work. It could still be better. And a roll like this, landing crits, gives draw speed reduction and precision damage. It just works out, not bad at all. We have wild card, or in the GM, I was running stunning recovery. We have Vanguard Vindication. Final blows of this weapon grant a small amount of health. There's some options there, but precision instrument, it's a rare good thing for it. It's something that the others just simply cannot do. It's more than portable weapon. It's more than a lot of things. Of course, you have to get the stack up, but once it's there, it's there. And you could also pair it with Enlightened Action as well. And the first time we've seen that on a bow, I believe. Just land hits, you get increased handling and reload. We have tried and true things like shoot to loot, explosive payload. The whistle can get this. I have it, I gotta roll with it, non-adept. Explosive head versus barriers is great. And you can also grab ammo at a distance. There's a lot of utility with it. But remember, these are just simply safe weapons in general. Technically, you could be as far back as the bow will allow with its accuracy and just pick things off. So for PvE, I think draw time is pretty critical. It allows DPS, just plain and simple. But we have Archer's Tempo or Enlightened Action with either Incandescent or Precision Instrument. We have Explosive Head. That's always just great for PvE in general. In the Crucible, it's about speed, speed with scalers. The bow can and will shine if you land on it. It's unique compared to the other bows. With it being a precision frame, that type of draw speed with the Adept mod is key. But again, one last time, I went over some things that it can do. And for some of you, it's another bow. I get it. For some of you, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. I get that too. Might say I love my strident whistle with, let's say, Archer's Incandescent. Like, that's great. You don't need the wild card tray with it. Not worth it. Others are going to be all over it. The bow enthusiasts. They're going to be all in. And bows, as simple as they are, they do very opposite things with their combinations. Some is speed, some is damage, some's scorch. Some are better with shields. So this one does meet the criteria of innovation for me. The combos that they put together on this thing, paired with the draw speed it can get, we have the wild card origin trait. It's unique. But then again, it's just another bow doing both things. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. Let's talk about Prius Dianax down below. What are your thoughts on it? How does it compare to your other bows? Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.